A sellout crowd is piling into the Olympic Stadium in Athens, Greece for the gold medal game of World Basket 98. Russia going up against Yugoslavia. That's the Russian team, the main scorer there and on-court leader, the number four, Karasev, averaging 15 points a game. But the hero in the semifinal was the number 10, Sergei Babkov. He had 30 points in the game against the USA. And of course, the game, the semifinal hero, Sergei Panov, wearing number 14, hit the game-winning bucket with time running out for Russia. A team loaded with experience. And there's the coach of Russia, Sergei Belov. This is the second World Championship final. The last one four years ago, he was up against the Dream Team, Dream Team 2, and his team got uh, pretty heavily thrashed. And of course, Yugoslavia, led by the star Dejan Bodoroga. He's maybe a bit tired tonight. Full 45 minutes he played in the overtime game against Greece. And he's also their top scorer. He has 15 points a game. Jelko Rebracha, the number 11, is the big force inside for them. And as their coach, Jelko Abradovic, he uh, got the silver medal in the Olympic Games two years ago. And he also got the gold in the European Championships of 12 months ago. The two referees, Ruben Borovnik of Israel and Juan Figueroa of Puerto Rico. Well, Russia got to this stage with a thrilling 66-64 victory over the United States. A stunning comeback in the final two and a half minutes. As you look at the starters, Russia, a two-point win in their semifinal, while Yugoslavia finally defeated Greece 78-73 after trailing for most of the game. They won that in overtime. Let's take a look back now at some of the greatest moments that we've seen in this year's World Basket Tournament. There is the, on the right, the, the General Secretary of FIBA, Borislav Snagovic. One of the great men in world basketball, without question. And he's watching the Yugoslavian team warm up. As the IOC president, Juan Antonio Samaran, he's uh, come over specially from Barcelona just to have a word with the FIBA officials. Of course, basketball is one of the major sports, possibly the major sport of uh, the Olympics these days. Well, Russia have never won the gold medal at the World Championships. Of course, the United, the USSR won three gold medals. But since the breakup of the Soviet Union, Russia have only claimed the silver, and that was at Toronto, a surprising silver at that four years ago. Yugoslavia, on the other hand, have won three golds, and they too, after their recent troubles and the breakup of the nation, have yet to win a gold, although those times have been recent. So this will be a big gold medal for one of these two countries. Big point to prove as well for the Yugoslavs because they were to host the tournament in 1994. It was taken away from them because of United Nations sanctions, and the result of that, that stadium that was to have, hold, have held that particular tournament has never been completed. Well, of course, the world interest, as you just saw, John Saunders and Jack Ramsey, the former great coach of the Portland Trailblazers, they'll be doing commentary back in America. Yugoslavia came into this tournament, one of the favorites. Nobody the outright favorites, but if you had to pick somebody before the tournament started, this was probably the best money. Well, the teams are getting ready for World Basket 98, the gold medal clash. And it's a clash of European powers. Yugoslavia, the European champions, decided last year in Barcelona against Russia. 
who are wearing white. And in this Olympic Stadium, a packed house. Looks like a few more people have made the trip from both Yugoslavia and Russia following yesterday's developments in the semifinals with those victories. Jumping at center will be Zuko Rebracha wearing number 11 in blue for Yugoslavia up against the great Russian Mihai Mihailov. And it's Rebracha winning the toss. And Tomasevic, who did not start in that game and that win over Greece, wearing number 14 for Yugoslavia, is in the lineup. That's Bodoroga, the star of last night, with the ball. Guarded by Sergei Panov one of the other stars for Russia. And Evgeny Kisserin trying to guard Zelko Rebracha, and Rebracha is off to an outstanding start. Sergei Babkov hit 30 plus points last night. He gets it to Panoff, and Panoff goes and uses the window. Russia are always at their best when Panoff makes the early running for them. Great left-handed shot. These two teams expect a close one. They went to overtime earlier in the tournament. Russia, on that occasion, beaten by the Yugoslavs. Well, Miroslav Veric with the ball in to Tomasevic. And Tomasevic draws the contact in an early foul against, it looks like, Mihail Mihailov, number 11. He's, he's prone to foul trouble. There he goes. Across the back of the arm. Both these two centers, Mikhailov and also Rebracha for the Yugoslavs, known to have trouble with fouls. Expect them to get a lot of attention. Tomasevich comes up short on both of them, and Sergei Panov looks the run. Vasily Karasev, arguably the star of this entire tournament for Russia. Babkov has had two outstanding starts the last two games. He's guarded by Barrett, but he goes right past him and into the lane and draws a foul. Thirty points in that semi-final. Babkov, and he only played 24 minutes to get those. Here he goes on the drive, draws the foul. Both teams look confident. Oh, excellent defense by Zuko Rabracha. Over to Sasha Obradovich and Zuko Rabracha. What can you say about the anticipation? Anticipation. He also gives him a great deal of shot blocking ability. We didn't say much of, much of it in the semi-final against Greece. But he has been averaging something like three and a half block shots a game. Evgeny Kisserin. And a, another turnover for Russia. That's two. Obradovich, Bodoroga, who's moving to play in Greece next year with Panathinaikos. Tomasevich left wide open and banks it. Strong confident start by the Yugoslavs. The dish to Kisserin. Kisserin pumped. Kisserin will get two. Fouls on Tomashevich. He's been alternating as the starter with uh, Milenko Topic. Tonight he gets the nod. Evgeny Kisserin, who played in Croatia this past year, professionally moving back to CSKA where he has played before. And the great. Belov, 1972 Olympic hero for the Soviet Union, is now the coach of Russia, and is unorthodox in his methods on the bench, to say the least. One of two for Kisserin. Miroslav Beric. Obradovich, who will play 
probably about 10 minutes before the introduction of Sasha Georgievich. Obradovich, very good, but can knock it down. Vesely Karasev, all the way, the left hand. Great drive by Karasev, created by a very strong outlet pass by Mikhail Mikhailov. Karasev called the best defender on this Russian team. He's guarding Obradovich, and he almost calls a turnover there. A push on Sergei Panov. Panov is going to have to get physical with Body Roga. Maybe the only thing that takes Body Roga out of his game. Great steal there by, by Karasev. Yeah, that's hand checking by Panov. A lot of attention being paid to Zucco or Bracha, but Fodoroka with a touch pass and he finds an opening. The Russians looking a little lax down low. Quick hands here by Fodoroka. To Bracha. Mahailov. That foul line jump is a speciality of his. Rumored to be going also to CSKA. I don't believe he's finalized terms. He's been playing in Spain. A lot of movement across Europe with these players. Podoroga drives in. Is there anything this man cannot do? The other way. Pena, left-handed, knocked away with the ball on the rim by Rebracha. Fodoroga goes the other way and has an opening and uncharacteristically turns it over. Sobraja cleaning the rim. Panoff and I'm not sure about that one. Panoff called for the charge. Packing in, so he's got two early fouls. Here it is again. Oh, there's a little bit of contact there. That's a little bit of elbow. Certainly Tomashevich made a lot of it. Well, if the beginning is any indication, this one will indeed be a classic. Two places rich in basketball history and respected around the world. So in terms of having two, two teams playing for the world championship, you couldn't ask for a better game. Well, these are the two, uh, the two basketball programs that have produced some of the best players in Europe over the last 20 years or so, Yugoslavia and also uh, Russia as part of the old Soviet Union. Lithuania also deserve a mention, but the Russian players, players like Alexander Volkov, some famous names in the in the game. Sasha Bradovich again, who starts with Alexander Georgievich or Alexander Sasha Georgievich coming off an injury. Fodoroga does so many things well for a man his size. And Rebracha off an outstanding start too. Well, Sergey Belov pulled the right punches against the United States as they were trailing by 10 points late, just a little over two minutes to go. They clawed their way back to get in this position. I think they surprised even themselves with that comeback. Dimitri Damani has come in, another CSKA star. I think one of the few Russians who have played college basketball in the United States. He played at St. Joseph's, where he won a lot of honors. So one of the stars in Europe in the making in Dimitri Damani. He's got his hands full guarding Bodoroga. Oh, and he already wins a small little battle. Bodoroga called for a charge. Not much contact. There it goes. It's exactly what Panoff did at the other end. There's no reason why that shouldn't be called. 
Well, the difference being Bodoroga actually threw his elbow. And Panov's on the bench at the moment. Babkov, probably the best shooter on the team. And he gets it out to Damani. Excellent start for Damani. He's played some useful cameo roles for the Russians in this tournament. Shaping up like this could be another one as well. Working it around. Rebracha. Or rather, Rebradovic. Spin move. Into the lane. Turnover. But turn back over to Yugoslavia. Obradovic drives. And the fight by Tomasevic. And Damani comes up. Trump wins it. Gets it out to Karasev. Over to Mihailov. Excellent transition by the Russians. More great work from Damani, sparking the break. Karasev to Mikhailov. Well, Russia with a 12-10 lead. I think there's a little partisan crowd here in their favor. Tomasevich. Babcock running mid-court. Over to Damani and blocked by Obradovich, but fouled. Well, it's not often you see the Yugoslavs getting scorched like this on the transition. That was a block by Mikhailov, which sparked this off. And again, it's Damani, who's having a fantastic few minutes as he came on. Well, Georgievich is going to get right off the bench and come in for Obradovich. Obradovich, Obradovich a little shaky. Dimitri Damani, how good will he be in the future? He's not how, shying how away. Did he, the, how did he get that black eye? Well, I must. <laughs> He's not shying away on the world stage, that's for sure. One that two minutes, 30 seconds, and no, no basket for, uh, for Yugoslavia. Big boost for the Russians, that. Well, Miroslav Veric. To Bodoroga. Shot clock now down to six. Bodoroga pulls up at the free throw line and no good, but a nice rebound by Thomas Sevich. Thomas Sevich into the lane, makes contact. That could be a second foul to Mikhailov. Well, Vitaly Notsov is getting off the bench for Russia. Yeah, Belov's taking no chances here, I don't think. Mihailov went seven and a half minutes, but he picked up two fouls. And this is not this young man's forte. No, we've seen him miss these before. And CSK Moscow, we're talking to him at one stage this summer as well. Makes the second one. Mihailov needs to be very careful because the Yugoslavians will go right at him. Russia with the ball, Babkov. Still guarded by Beric and little trap. Shot clock down to 10. And Babkov saying clear out. Goes into the lane. He is smooth. Very good at shooting the three as well, but he can drive Sergei Babkov. We saw a lot of that. It's the threes, in fact, that killed off the Americans last night. The start of the game, though, it was his ability to drive and penetrate. Bodoroga guarded by Damani still. Fade away. He's got the height. He's got the height, and he was complaining that he was fouled. It's almost a trademark move for Bodoroga. And on almost a trademark reaction. He really does talk to the referees, Bodoroga. Karasev. And Kisserin comes in. Strong rebound by Kisserin. That's an excellent rebound.
Karasev also going to CSKA next season. Pepkov pulls up. Oh, he is good. He's been a real purple patch in the last three games, Sergei Babkov. Coming to form at exactly the right time in this tournament. Plays his professional ball with Malaga in Spain. Barrett goes baseline. Russia did not close off the baseline. Ten and a half minutes go to go in the first half. Everything that we thought it would be. Back and forth. Two heavyweights. Karasev. To Damani. Mahaila drives. Oh, a nice touch by the big man, Mahaila. He's out there having to be very careful with those two fouls. Offensively, very smooth, Mikhail Mikhailov. Georgievich, end of the lane. And excellent defense, but Tomasevich with the offensive rebound and putback. Uncontested layup as well. Mikhailov couldn't risk it. This Yugoslavian team fell behind against Greece. And at some points, it wasn't looking very good. But they keep coming at you. Oh, nice up ahead to Thomas Savage, and he's having a blinder. Well, he plays, he's played with Partizan Belgrade played in Barcelona in the EuroLeague Final Four and really had an outstanding tournament despite Partizan's uh, lack of success. They were just overpowered, I believe. It was against Pinder Bologna, wasn't That's it? That's right. Uh, played off very well, in fact, in the first game, but uh, in the end, overpowered, as, as you say. But uh, he's one of so many of these young Partizan players and so many young Yugoslav players who are going to make their name around Europe in the next few years. Georgievich miss another of an example of uh, these players from Partizan Belgrade who get uh, contracts around Europe. Miroslav Beric is about to start his second year at Tocharanica over in the Basque country in Spain. And Babkov showing that he's got the moves. No doubt about that. This is the pull up jumper. That's pretty sweet. Babkov. Injured in last night's game, we believe, and sat out most of the second half, or the early part of the second half, with uh, ankle injury, but still came back and led his team to victory. He was really the only Russian player who, who could step up and consistently hit from all over the place against the United States. They came in for the last eight minutes and uh, scored them for 10 points. Babkov will inbound it. Nine and a half minutes to go in the first half. And a 19-19 game, we're all square. Karasev working against a slowed down Georgievich because of surgery early this year. And Panoff, strong move by Panoff. Back in, looks at the officials as well. Malinko Topic in for Yugoslavia, wearing number 15. Miroslav Veric has sat down. And also Skopanovic, number five. Lado Skopanovic. And Skopanovic is open, but traveling call against Topic. Now comes an interesting move for Russia. Igor Kudelin, ring number five, has come in for Sergei Babkov. There's been one disappointment, I think, with this Russian team. It's been Kudelin. Maybe he saved his best for last. How many times have I heard you say that? 
has been maddeningly inconsistent. Well, nice bounce pass. And Vitaly Nasov, who has also come in, was the recipient. Impression straight away from Kudelin, but what they really want to do is to shoot the ball well. Rodoroga with the height advantage against Imani. And Skapanovic on the perimeter. Rodoroga with a rebound. Belov looking on. Topic and the Red Star captain, Red Star Belgrade captain, scores. Karasev. And a block against Karasev. We saw in the game against the USA that Karasev is a master of positioning, getting himself in players' line of fire. teams able to keep it close so far. I think this one will be close all the way through. I think one of the key developments in this Russian team has been the pinch play. I think if you look at these two teams, Bradovich talking to his club and the points, I mean, Russia are getting a lot of points off their bench. Mm -hmm. Starting with Damani, he's got four for them. And Nosov has come off with a couple. But I think coming into the World Basket 98, you would have said definitely that Yugoslavia had had a better bench. Mm -hmm. So the bench play for Russia is critical. We've also yet to see the young guard, or rather for guard forward for Russia, Pashutin, come on. Zakhar Pashutin. So he'll be another one who will probably play some important minutes tonight. That was a very good drive by Topic there. Taking Pan off to the hoop. Well, both Panoff and Mihailov have two fouls apiece. versatility of Votoroga allows him to go out and he is being guarded by Zakhar Pashutin. So Russia electing to put the smaller players on Votoroga. Small quick players. The in and out and Topic can't knock it down. To Dalen. Over to Pashutin. Pashutin looking for an opening. Shot clock now under eight, seven. Karasev drives. Nasov battles for the rebound, but Botoroga wins it. And he comes the other way. Topic, strong move on the reverse layup, but can't score it. Now Pashutin looks to run. Panov has to be careful with the two fouls. Nasov. Oh, what a block by Rebracha. It's like a, a man amongst boys out there, Abraza. And Georgievich goes all the way, so the pace of the game picking up a little bit. Up to Karasev. And Karasev gets a chance for a three-point play. He did so well to hang on to that pass. It was a bit too long for him. But he managed to get it back into his stride. Gets the layup. Draws the foul on Milenko Topic. There he goes. Manages to cling on to it. I don't think Topic was expecting him to get hold of it. Well, 
important times for Zachar Pashut, and I think that's the key matchup right now on Bodoroga. Georgievich looks to get into the offense. He struggled the last couple of nights. Panov. Pashutin. Now Kudalen with the shot clock down to 10. Uncorks it from three. Oh. Plus it, Kudalen. Standing play by Kadalen. Of course, he al he's always willing to shoot it, and it's outstanding if he makes it. If he misses it, it's like, why did he shoot it? Because sometimes it looks like he's shooting it right when he gets off the team bus. We were saying before how maddeningly inconsistent he can be. Every now and then, though, you see a stat sheet from a EuroLeague game when he's had a really hot night and he shot something like seven from ten from three point range. And some poor team has got scorched. He's ended up with something like 35 points in a ludicrously uh, short amount of time on the court. Very natural flowing action. Well, that has given them a seven point lead. Russia leading Yugoslavia. I don't know that Russia wants to fall behind against Russia like they did against Greece because Russia have a little more firepower. Well, Soviet teams traditionally were always difficult to play catch up on. And uh, the times I've seen Russia in this particular tournament against Italy, once they got a lead, they kept it for the rest of the game. And they just drew away from Greece, like Greece weren't even there. That was in the second phase. They can, cer they can certainly handle it. dry right now for Yugoslavia. You saw the statistic there. Two and a half minutes without a score. It's the second thin patch they've had in this game as well. There are times when the Russian defense really can bite on you. Bodoroga. Contact by Kisserin. And Kisserin. Kisserin's playing solid minutes. Kudalen. Shot clock to 10. Kudalen against Podoroga. Rims out. Georgievich. Podoroga in the lane. Over to Topic. And knocked out of Georgievich's hands. They still have 11 seconds to get a shot off. So the workhorse Podoroga will come out and Abradovich in. He's played the first 16 minutes of this game after playing the full 45 last night. Abradovich right off the bench. Oh. That's the end of that Baron Pat. That was a three-pointer, but Karras had the other way, and give credit to Vitaly Nozlov. Very quietly, Nozlov has had a great game since he came on. He plays Mikhailov. He's had a couple of good little passes, rebounded strongly, draws the foul off Djordjevic. That's an excellent pass to get Karasev free. And that time he does convert the three-point play. He goes to seven points. Oh, Georgievich finds Robracha. And instead of shooting right away, he pulls out, but he still has time to collect himself.
Sergey Belov is going to put Mihailov back in. Karasev. Oh, dear. Kisserin was not ready. Uh, Kudalin read that one, but a little too late. He fouled Stepanovic. This is a calculated gamble on Bella's part. We talked about his unorthodox methods. Let's look at the replay. He's bringing both Mihailov and Panov back. They each have two fouls, but particularly Mihailov, he's prone, he's prone to foul trouble, so he's going to have the last three minutes. I'd left Nozov out there. He was doing just fine. Bobracha, baseline. They looked on that shot as though Mikhailov has been told not to compete too strongly into the boards as well for fear of getting that third foul. So what was the point of bringing Nozov out unless he was particularly tired? Well, into Panoff. Oh, Panoff with the left hand. That left handed uh, shot of Panoff's. A real sweet little number that. In he goes. Two fifteen to go in the half. Georgievich has not caught fire yet. Topic, shot clock to eight. And a little bit out of control of Bradovic. They're gonna have to hurry. Skopanovic. That was a walk. Yes. And a travel. Yugoslavia faced something of this order against Greece in the semi-final, trailing early on. They also had a, a little bit of a sticky time in the quarter-final against rank outsiders Argentina. What they have to do now is overcome a team that is pretty good once it gets in the lead. As the scoring at the moment, Rebracha has eight points, Tomasiewicz seven for the Yugoslavs. Russia being led by Karasev with seven, and there's also six points for Mikhailov, six also for the number 14, Sergei Panov. One minute, 51 seconds to go in the first half. Russia with a five-point lead. Today, Lenz, losing control, chases it down. Karasev just loses control of it. Like a bar of soap sometimes. Must have been Irish Spring. Oh, he finds Obradovich, Robracha. Karasev does so many things. Comes from behind with a block. He never gives up on, on playing defense, Vasily Karasev. Doesn't want to give up anything to anybody. Same is true, actually, with his opposite number there, Sasha Obradovich. Well, we're under a minute to go in the first half. Kudelin. Nice control by Kudelin. I don't think he wants to try to do too much. But that's just the type of player he is, isn't it? He's not a great dribbler of the ball, but he is a very good passer as well as a good shooter. He does have quite a bit of foot speed as well. He can get up as well. You see him dunk, he's very nice. Inside, and a little breakdown from Yugoslavia, but they escape. They allowed Karasev in the paint. Off the inbounds. 
Motoroga, who's been sitting on the bench for a while, comes in and hits a two. And again, he looks at the referee and asks why there wasn't a foul call. They had the score wrong on the scoreboard there for a second. But it's Russia leading by just three, 33-30. Karasev. And his shot bounces off the shot clock. Well, already one similarity to last night. After controlling most of the first half, as Greece did, Russia now lead by just three. And Yugoslavia can pull to within one or even tie the game with the last shot. This is Bolly Roger back in the game, back in the paint as well. creating havoc. He's got six points now. I think Russia could really help their calls with a good defensive stand here and maybe a turnover. This whole Babkov thing has still got me baffled. He's gone out again and hasn't been able to get back in. He, he went out with quite a few minutes left on the clock. They're going to play full court pressure. Dimitri Damani has come in. They're trying to make Yugoslavia burn some time off the clock. Pressuring Abradovich. They did force a turnover, and they're going to get the last shot. Here comes Kadalin. Oh, what a finish. Great finish from the start of the first half for the Russians. And with that shot, Igor Kadalin, a great finish, a momentum shifter for sure. 35 Russia, 30 Yugoslavia, World Basket 98, the gold medal game. Sasha Georgievich committing the turnover, that's a rarity. Fidelin's clear. Through it goes, the slenderest of margins left on the clock. This is the Russia that when they are playing like this, it is going to be tough to beat them. And we said before they went back on the court, if they could have a defensive stand and force a turnover, that would be big. And I'm telling you, that was a big play because Yugoslavia could have pulled it within one or even tied it. That's right. Tells a little bit of the story. 
Russia very strong inside there, 12 from 17 under the basket. Less so the Yugoslavs, although they have shot the ball better from uh, just outside the, the painted area. Well, better than 50% for Russia, so, or for Yugoslavia, so it's not mm. bad. By no means. But one would question their interior defense with Russia shooting 12 of 17 in the paint. I'm sure Zoko Abradovich will do something to try to close off those passing lanes. Yep. Some of those, of course, will be layups uh, caused by Russia's very quick transition, which uh, the Yugoslavs have not been tremendous in defending, and maybe that suggests that uh, a few tired legs from last night's marathon against Greece. Good word choice, since we are in Greece, marathon. Yes. Well, it's World Basket 98, second half action. Russia against Yugoslavia, the gold medal at stake here in the Olympic Stadium in Athens in the big development. Vitaly Nosov jumping center for Russia. Mikhail Mihailov staying on the bench, perhaps to stay out of, out of foul trouble. Well, expect the unexpected from Sergei Belov, he usually can. And that's a big surprise, Nosov being out there. Very rarely he starts a half. Skapanovic into the lane, strong move from Skapanovic. Boy, he can get up as well. That's a bit of a surprise as well. Him starting the second half for Yugoslavia. Instead of Miroslav Veric. And Malenko Topic also in the starting lineup instead of Tomasevic. Russia leading by three. Yugoslavia picking up the defense. Shot clock down to three. Nosov, not the man you want shooting, but they had no choice. Kisarin very nearly got the rebound as well. Both teams late coming out of the locker room. After the halftime break, not much time to warm up. So that would suggest that a lot of talking was done. Rabracha, goaltending. Yes, reach the, reach the top of his arc. Once it's on the way down, that is goaltending. A very positive start for Yugoslavia, the European champions. The drive by Kisarin. Nosov battling. He is coming up big. Well, I don't think I've seen him play so well for so long. It's an amazing performance. He looks mobile, a lot more mobile than you usually see from him. This so much better coordinated as well. This could be a problem, though. He really does struggle from the line. Oh, yes, you don't see many, many beautiful free throws from him. Oh, that, was, that was just fine, though. Oh, Kisserin snuck in there and almost stole the offensive board. It's nearly a putback. Rebracha just took it away from him. Odoroga, a point forward. Obradovic. Skapanovic in the corner. Now it's Podoroga, shot clock winding down. And Yugoslavia kind of fell asleep that time, didn't end up with a good shot. He only had two seconds to get the shot off, Podoroga. Look at Nassau. Boy. Look at him getting back as well on the far side. And good battling defense. That's a good call as well. Topic was hindering Karasev as he went for the ball after that steal. <laughs> Igor Kudelin in for Sergei Babkov. So there must be something wrong with Sergei Babkov. The physio is coming over to him straight away.
Good Aylan. Top of the key. Finds Nussoff. Hey, you talk about pitch players. In the first half is Damani. Fidelin. Great passer of the ball. In the first half, that was Dimitri Damani. And even Nossov had some good minutes. And look at Igor Kudelin. Oh, swatted. And he gives the goal pin. And I'm wondering why Kudelin didn't just go up and dunk it. Maybe he thought the man was a bit too close for it. You know, it's off the, uh, off the glass on its way down. Wow. Two big plays by Kudelin give the Russians a little breathing space. Good hustle by Obradovich, though. It's a foul by Kudelin. Uh, the foul oh, actually on Nosov, but he's soaking up some of that pressure. Yeah, he was reaching around. The reach and a second foul, I believe, on Nossov, but that could be Kadalin. No, it is Nossov again. This is a smart strategy, I think, by Yugoslavia to try to go inside to Rebracha. He's certainly been one of their go-to players so far in this tournament. He's not had that much in guard because Djordjevic has just not been fit enough to take on the scoring load. Bodoroga surrounded and gets what I think might be a third foul. It might be Panov. In fact, it's Kisserin. First foul. So, Podoroga taking it upon himself to go inside. Mihailov back in. Nosov sits down. So, Belov played Nosov for the first three and a half minutes in the game, or in the second half, and didn't really lose any ground. He misses the second, does Podoroga. Wow, if he had, <laughs> I thought he was going to shoot that one. Kudelin all the way. And a little bit out of control. Panov forces a jump ball. Kudelin was going nowhere. They were looking just to get a, a jump ball out of this one. The chance of Russia, Russia, by the Russian fans, and I think there are quite a few Greek fans pulling for the Russians. Kisserin and Russia win the tip. Kudalin running baseline. Bounce pass to Mihailov. And Mikhailov should have been ready for that. Should have. He's probably going to burn Kisser in for it, but uh, Kudelin for it. That was like a pretty obvious pass to me. Mikhailov, I think, was just asleep. Obradovic. Panoff. Humans work on the boards. Now Kudelin thinks he's Magic Johnson. Igor rims it. Karasev with the board. You're saying that Ka uh, Karasev does everything. Took it right away from Topic. Karasev and Robracha. And attempting to gain control, they hit the ball on the underside of the backboard. showing us this to try and uh, talk about whether it was the other side of the backboard. I have a feeling that when it came down the second time, Rebracha had a foot on the line when he touched it out to the player. Fifteen, nineteen to go before the gold medalists are decided. Looking at both sets of players at the hotel today, both look pretty confident. 
we did see the Russians poolside. Yeah. They like their sunshine to the Russians. Well, they're all wearing their clothes, so not trying to get a tan. Dusan Ivkovic, he's been successful in Yugoslavia and as the coach at Olympiakos. He's uh, almost royalty here in Athens, what he's achieved with Olympiakos. Of course, won the EuroLeague for them a couple of seasons ago. He's uh, had a good think about it. Wasn't sure whether he wanted to stay for the season in the end. He decided he would do. Those were Russian flags. It is somewhat confusing. The Yugoslavian flags, they, they're the same colors almost, but the stripes, the colored stripes for the Yugoslavian flag are on the outside with white going down the middle. The other confusing thing is the, there's also a Serbian flag, which is the Russian flag in reverse, if you like. If you put the Russian flag upside down and put a little crest in the middle, you have the Serbian flag, and of course that's the major part of Yugoslavia. Kisarin between his legs against Topic. Whoa, what a move by the boy from Siberia. Cool as you like. Skipanovic. Oh. What is it about these guys coming off the bench? An unsung hero could be evolving in Skipanovic. Or is he in Damani and Nozov? Panov. This guy always gets the job done. One of the heroes of the game in the semi-final against the USA. Hero of the Soviet Union for that one, surely. Back to a six-point lead. Topic. And that's what was being diagrammed. Little rotation around the at the top of the key. Giving the option on the three-pointer. Topic lethal from that distance in this tournament so far. Yugoslavian contingent, the fans starting to make quite a bit of noise. The left end of the stadium. Mihailov shot. Um, good defense, at least to slow it up, but a kicking call against Kadalin. Yugoslavia with a chance to tie with a three or pull to within one. And Fodorogo with the rebound keeps it alive. It's Kapanovic for three. Kudelin, bounce pass. The Panov, he's bumped. And Abradovich took Panov's feet away. Panov asking for an intentional foul. There really was nothing else it. he could do here. That superb pass by Kudelin. That's dangerous, though. And Abradovich not even trying to go for the ball, so I think Panov may have had something. They may have been right about that. Panov not exactly a brilliant free throw shooter. He had that brilliant play in the semifinal win over the United States. With 10 seconds left, Russia trying to inbound the ball to Babkov. They could only find Panoff, and the big man drove almost the length of the court and scored the winning bucket with time running out. Makes one of two. Coming up on 13 minutes. Kisserin, I think, has been whistled. The second foul. That's a mean pick. Todoroga, top of the key. Tries to get his man off the ground. Doesn't matter. He, he turns pan off. Two point game, Russia.
Panov. Yugoslavia's defense picking up just a bit. Shot clock to eight. Karasev. Panov for three. Mihailov. Great defense by Yugoslavia. Excellent defense. Skapanovic decides better against putting up the three. Topic into the lane. Knocked out of bounds by Topic following his shot. And noticeable in these last few minutes. The Yugoslavs have upped their defense a little bit. What they did against Greece last night. Hauled themselves back into the game at one stage, 10 points down. Panov leaves his feet. Another turnover, and you're right, Yugoslav's defense turning the tide. Level game. They have definitely turned it up a notch on the defensive end. Might be a good time for Sergei Belov to call a timeout. Well, Panov breaks into the lane. Oh, what a strong move. on your screen there was wrong it's not 45 all it is in fact yes there is 47 45 to russia shot clock to eight Fodoroga again working against panov it's going to go inside not that time kadalin with a board hurries up court all the way kadalin what a move the moment he decided he was going to take Milenko Topic, there was no only one possible outcome. Boy, Kudel, this is one of the best performances I've seen from him for a couple of years in a Russian jersey. Well, that was a new wrinkle. He decided to sprint ahead of the defense, and I think kind of caught Yugoslavia napping. Skopanovic has been so vital for Yugoslavia in the second half. But he is called for traveling. Great trap there in the corner. Radoka Skipanovic, just 23 years of age. So there, Mikhailov and Kudelin putting a squeeze on Skipanovic. Nikita Morganov and uh, Zaka Pashutin are messing around on the bench. Both of them may still get a chance to come into this game. One of the big developments in the game is that Sergei Babkov has had to go to the bench. He really must be bothered with either a knee or a foot injury. He's trying to loosen up. Um, Sasha Georgievich also has yet to come in for Yugoslavia in the second half. So maybe that injury is going to keep him on the bench too. This was that great hustle by Obradovich to come back. It was excellent to get back. All he got was uh, called for goaltending in, in the end. But uh, let's give some credit to Kudelin for the, the, the steal as well. That's the Kudelin pass to Nozov. This is one of those Panoff moves to the basket. He's got 11 points now. Not known as a huge scorer, but he's leading the Russian scorers. Well, flag waving going on inside the Olympic Stadium here in Athens because with 10 minutes and 10 seconds to go, the gold medal is going to go to one of these two teams. The energy level has picked up. Karasev, bounce pass to Kisarin. Up against the giant, Rebrancha, who blocks it. Fodoroga. Look at the ball movement by Yugoslavia. So methodical. 
Skopanovic. Skopanovic got out of control there. Shot clock to seven. Regrets is going to have to work. He goes up against Nossov. And that was not a good looking shot by Robacha. He's having to come a lot further out to get the ball in the first place. It leaves him further to go with, with a move. And Vitaly Nassau telling Kudelin, don't pass it to me while I'm on the run. And Kudelin, going in, turns it over. Damani's going to be going to be coming in. As is Tomasevich for Yugoslavia. Four-point lead for Russia for the title of best in the world. Rebracha makes up for that lousy trip the previous time down court. Good elevation. And the referee saw Rebracha that time throw an elbow at Igor Kadalin going through the lane. And he threw one. And in fact, he's going to sit down. He's probably feeling a bit tired. Now, this is the start of the second half. That's the reason why uh, Thomas Shevich has come in. Sergey Babkov is also back in for Russia. So, Damani and Babkov in. Babkov bumped by Skopanovich. Kudalin goes out. Kisserin is also on the bench. Russia has not scored, as you see there, for quite a while. But they're still leading by two. Tarasev, Babkov, Barrett's hands all over him, and a charge called against Babkov. I'm surprised they didn't call the reach in by Beric. You won't see it here. Good position by Tomasevic. Was it? I think it's still in motion. Personally, still a good differ. Tomic for three, and Yugoslavia have claimed the lead. Critical moments now for Russia. Bumped by Abradovic. That's his third. That could be a very costly foul indeed. It might just force Abradovic to bring Djordjevic back into the, into the fray. Seven minutes and 49 seconds remaining. Yugoslavia on Topic's three-pointer have reclaimed the lead. They've shown the ability to pick up the defense. Russia battling against the drought. As good as as well as Russia have played, they now trail by one. All credit to Yugoslavia. They are such a resilient group of basketball players. You never feel entirely comfortable, I don't think, when you've got a lead on Yugoslavia. Even if it's as, as healthy a one as Greece had at various times last night. The Russians are regrouping now. But they're an amazing team. We saw them. Well, I saw them against Canada earlier on, uh, slumbering and uh, almost looking like they were going to pit pitch a game against a, a team which finished up in 12th position in this tournament. And also, in their uh, semi-final against the USA, they were playing probably their worst basketball of the tournament. They suddenly came out of it, scorched the USA, and won the game. That's the contingent of Yugoslavian fans up in that corner. And just 
over on this side is also a, a group of Russian fans as well on the left hand side there's more Yugoslav fans as you expect well, Russia inbound it hoping to reclaim the lead Mihailov has come back in now it's Damani Kisserin Shot clock to seven. Kisserin against Topic. Contact, no call. Air ball. Battle for the, and unlucky for Yugoslavia. Out of bounds. Resets the shot clock. That was going to be a Yugoslav ball. So Tomashevic made this grab for it. Just comes off his hand. Wanders out of bounds. Kudalin coming back in for Damani. Mihaila, Tomasevich reaching in, knocking it away. Kudalin comes in, saves the day. Yugoslavia are really doing everything on defense right now. Babkov and a little too much defense that time by Miroslav Beric. Yugoslav getting close to being in the penalty. And Dutch is hand checking him that. Well, we're under seven minutes to go. Russia trying to rediscover that rhythm. Babkov, Yugoslavia are really tightening the screw on, on defense. Look at Kisser and have to battle. Kodoroga takes the ball away. What determination by Yugoslavia. You have to steal by Body Roga. The defense is really biting on the Russians now. Body Roga all the way to the basket. Can't knock it in. This is great entertainment. Kisserin. And out of bounds off of Kisserin, complaining that he was bumped. And there you go, yes it is a while since we've had anybody scoring. Obradovich for three. Kudalin, vital block out of Podoroga on the boards. Didn't even worry about trying to grab the ball. He just shielded Podoroga. Oh, yeah. Think about Podoroga for a guard. He hits a lot of rebounds. Oh, Mihailov trying to do too much. Drives into the lane. Now it's in the magician's hands. Podoroga. And Podoroga called for wrapping around. And Bogoroga is going to get a technical if he's not careful. He questions every single call. Zelko Obradovich is telling him to calm down. He can't believe it. It's difficult to tell from the, the close-up shot we had. He couldn't see the feet or whether they were positioned or not. Now, who's going to be the first, play, first team to score for something in the region of three minutes? Break this drought. Well, the referees allowing a lot of contact for calling the foul that time. Seems to me that on both ends of the floor, there's a lot more contact all over the place. A lot of hand checking. Panoff. Kudalin. For three. The battle. And a foul, I believe, against Kisserin. Kisserin or Panov. It's Kisserin, in fact, yes. Clearing out on the rebound. So before long, we're going to be in the bonus. 
And the free throw line is going to come into, become the major factor, I think. Barrett. Barrett's losing control, and Russia forced the turnover. Maharov looked like he was passing, and he passed it to himself. That could have been a double dribble. It's a little bit like a double dribble, isn't it? Look at his feet. I'm sure the referee saw that. Karasev. Still it won't go. Mihailov, rebound. Draws his man, and he does go to the line. Foul, I believe, on Thomas Savage. Might even be Buddy Roger. Full foul, Buddy Roger. So they, they call Buddy Roger for the reach before. The high lock goes to the line. Well, I think this becomes a factor. Bodiroga is on four fouls. Obradovich is on three fouls. And they're being forced to bring Georgievich back into the game. So it's Georgievich, Obradovich, and Bodiroga, three ball handlers. As Mihailov ties the game. But we're all level. He misses. Offensive rebound, Russia. And that's a worrying sight. The speed of Kudelin against Djordjevic with an injured leg. Worrying sight for the Yugoslavs. Kudelin. And I was waiting for a call, but there was none. There was certainly said. contact. Kisserin. Panov. The fight for the rebound, and it's Obradovich, and he is fouled by Kudelin. Boy, what a low-scoring game. I think it has more to do with defense than uh, bad shooting. The European basketball at the moment is dominated by defense. It's uh, in one of those defensive phases. Talking about basketball being dominated by defenses, this game certainly has been, in Europe anyway, this game has been a defensive struggle here in the second half. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think that the game, a basketball game, has to be beautiful, and uh, games can be won on the defensive end. I don't have a problem with it. No, me neither. I'm, I'm with David Cern, who was on, once asked whether uh, defense was ruining basketball. He said, how can defense ruin a game of basketball? How can, sorry, how can, what he actually said was, how can good defense ruin a game of basketball? And I, I'm right with him on that. But uh, it has been pretty spartan in the, in the second half. There's the fouls. Bolly Roger, the only one in real foul trouble. And in the second half, though, so far, we've not seen that many points. The Slavs have scored 20 points in this first uh, 16 minutes of the half. The Russians have managed 15. That's the press from around the world. It is World Basket 98. We're in there somewhere. That's the arm. That's you with the red shirt. That's right. No, I don't think so. Maybe five years ago. The, uh, That's me with the boots. <laughs> <laughs> so 1,500 journalists have been accredited for this uh, particular event. It's uh, media interest in basketball around Europe. Look at all the time. Rebounding farm at Rubracha is always the leading rebounder. He's got eight. And he's been sitting down for a while. Not any longer, though. He's back in. Djordjevic, Topic, Rubracha, Obradovic, and Fodoroga. And I think if Fodoroga fouls out, I think that is a major blow for Yugoslavia. And I mean, I don't know if they can win without him. I've never seen him do it, though. Very smart player. Djordjevic. Georgia's his struggle, but he keeps shooting. And Yugoslavia keep possession. And Georgia's is shooting is important in this tournament. Fodoroga for three. And the team's hustling, and Mihailov forced to knock it out of bounds. It was Rebracha and his hustle which gave the ball back to Yugoslavia. This is a classic, classic world basket. Under three minutes. 
tie game. Topic fumbles the ball. Georgievich desperately wants to catch fire. He uncorks one and he does hit the three. Crucial shot that could be. Georgievich hits it with about two minutes and 35 seconds. Yugoslavia lead 53 50. Kudelin. Oh! A perfect reply from Igor Kudelin. And I'm just watching the American coaches in the stands right now, and they are wide eyed and amused by this whole thing. This is a duel. It's a heavyweight fight, and right now, both teams are up against the ropes, slugging it out. Lebrecha, five seconds on the shot clock. Georgievich, forced on Corkett, pen off. Wins. Oh, Tony Rogue is out. Has fouled out of the game. What a major blow for Yugoslavia. He's the guy, as, as far as I was concerned, he was the guy that won them the European Championship last year. And that is a foul, definitely. He's pulling an arm away from Panov. And I think the Russians thought there was a timeout called there. In fact, it was just the buzzer for Bodiroga being removed from the game. Well, Bodiroga has fouled out of the game. It's a major development. 53-53, the most personal player, not only, not only on this court, but one of the most personal in the world is going to the bench. Yugoslavia are gonna have to win, really, without maybe the best player of this tournament. A major psychological blow, so many things on their offense go through Bodiroga, and they've now got a guard out there with an injured leg. So Russia with a one-point lead. Panoff making good on one. Georgievich makes contact and a foul called before the shot. Can they win without the man who has been really the star of this world basket, Dayan Budaroga? Georgievich, you have to admire the courage of this man. He's obviously playing at about, what would you say, 60%? Maybe less than that, in terms of his lateral movement. Wears his heart on his sleeve, does Georgievich. And he has given Yugoslavia a 55-54 lead. I still think the, uh, the psychological momentum is very much with the Russians, though, with Buddy Roger out of the game. Well, Panoff fumbling it around, gets in, and scores! Drops it. It wasn't pretty, but he got the job done. 14 points for Panoff. Sergey Panov has risen to the occasion two nights in a row. The champs, Russia, Russia, and Yugoslavia, Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia. And you know, before this final, somebody uh, uh, told me that Sergey Panov was, was going to be the leading scorer, which he currently is. I would have had a, a fit of hysterical laughter because he's just a nuts and bolts player. He's not a big scorer. You expect to get about maybe eight points from him every night. You get about five rebounds, three assists, a couple of steals, some blocks maybe, and just a lot of really hard work. But here he is, top scorer in the whole game with 14. The just close, sorry, got the close, I was going to say the closest to him. Uh, Kudelin's got 12, and there's also 12 points for Rebracha. Well, if you look that up and down with both team rosters, it, it's really a credit to the balance of the team because there are... I mean, everybody's scored practically. 
quite a few players. It's not a high scoring game though. Not by a long way. But the ebb, the ebb and flow of this thing is amazing. Georgievich, guarded by Karasev. Into the last minute as well. Kisseran fouls Georgievich. Is that what Belov wanted? And I don't think so. We're not looking at it, but he was pointing his finger at his forehead like think, think to his team. Yeah. Means Kisseran's out of the game. Kisseran's out. But the good news is Babkov, who can provide some offense, gets off the bench. It might even be a help to Russia. But Kisserin has been a warrior, just like this guy. Sasa Georgievich, one of the world's greatest players. Let's tied it up. This is for the lead. It is indeed. So the foul, a costly one. Under a minute to go. It's now or never for both of these teams. Panov drives, finds Mihailov, swatted by Robracha. Are you kidding me? Oh, Karasev with a steal, but he was out of bounds. Robracha with an amazing block. Mikhailov should have canned this. Robracha wasn't going to let him do it. It's as clean as you like. Perhaps fitting that it came on the defensive end because that is how they really stem the tide against the Russians. Of course, nothing the Russians do surprises us anymore. They might still come back and win this thing. They only trail by a point, but they have to be talking now about fouling because Yugoslavia do not have to shoot the ball. There's only 29.9 seconds remaining. And who are they going to foul? I think they're going to see, have a good look at uh, who comes out. Yugoslavia, you can bet your bottom dollar that they'll want the ball to go to Tomashevich if he's on the court. You can bet your bottom drachma since we're in Athens. I doubt very much that uh, Abradovich would, would put him in at this stage. Well, he does have Rebracha and Barrett, I believe, who is probably a pretty good free throw shooter, is coming in. Topic. Well, Topic has Topic missed a couple, hasn't he? I think he's covered most of his bases. Russia may be staring at a three-point deficit here in a second. Perhaps they can force a steal at the end of the first half. They force the steal. What is interesting is apart from Georgievich, there's nobody out there on the Yugoslav team who's actually actually taken a free throw in this game so far. Well, has Zabradovich not taken one? Nope. Oh, the trap and the foul. And Russia almost forced a turnover. I don't think they wanted to foul. But I think they are putting Topic on the line. That was a foul. Boy, oh boy, he was virtually mugged there by Sergei Panov. But that was the answer. Get him on the line. Milenko Topic is about to take his first free throws of the game. Thank you, Yugoslavia. They've only taken 10 in the whole game. Well, 25 seconds remaining. Yugoslavia now lead by two. And Topic just one of two. Rabracha battling on the board. Oh, what a big rebound. Selko Rabracha has come up big time. And before the shot, Karasev was trying to draw a, a foul to get three shots, but he was fouled before. So I think he only gets two. Radovic goes on four fouls. That big rebound by Rebracha. Now is that what's going to win this for Yugoslavia? Well, here it is again. Karasev hoping to get a foul called. 
attempted a three-point play. But the thing is, we're in the final minute with only 15, 15.6 seconds remaining, and the big criticism against Zelko Rabracha has been that he has never played in the big games. And I'm telling you what, he has played his heart out and made two incredible plays there in the final minute. That was an awesome offensive rebound. Don't forget he had the key block against Mihailov. He's blocked Mikhailov, gone down the other end, and when Topic bricked the second free throw, Rebracha gets up there and cans it. Boy. Looks like Yugoslavia may just have shaded this. It's all down to Karasev now. It is such a team with great self-belief. Yugoslavia. No team has beaten the Russians in this tournament in regulation time so far. Yugoslavia had to do it in overtime. Yugoslavia's at one defeat so far. Has come again in the game against Italy. We're setting the table for you. Karasev at the free throw line. Russia trailing by four. Presumably he'll make this. And Russia will try to get a turnover, but they may have to foul again. He does make both. They inbound the ball to Obradovich, and immediately a foul call on Karasev. 14.2 seconds remaining. I don't know if Belov has enough tricks in the bag to get out of this one. It's going to come down to Obradovich at the line. He makes the first one. He gets sticky if he makes the second one because it's two scores the Russians will need. Well, Russia have two timeouts. Yugoslavia one. Kudelin fouled. I'm not sure I agree with that because it stops the clock. It stops the clock and it puts Kudelin on the line. Unless you know something about Kudelin's free throw shooting. He makes the first one. Stranger things have happened. Yeah. He could miss this and they could get the rebound and shoot a three. And the way Russia's been going, I wouldn't be surprised. He makes both. They're going to have to foul again. And nobody's near Djordjevic. He gets it over to Topic. Up ahead to Rebracha. And they foul Rebracha with 4.7 seconds remaining. Trailing by two. That was good passing, though. Good working down at the clock by the Yugoslavs. Well, he has been an absolute giant in this World Basket 98. Selko Rebracha. He makes the first one. It's a three-point lead. If he makes this one, it's probably all over. Yugoslavia have won three World Championships, and they're closing in on the fourth. Nails it. That surely is the game. Karasev for three. Misses it. Yugoslavia have won. Yugoslavia have won World Basket 98. An unbelievable fight back Flares. against Russia. The players are in the Olympic Stadium. Zelko Abramovich hugging his team. Your heart bleeds for Russia. They are such a competitive bunch, and they played. They saved their best for the right night. But the best team may have won. And indeed, a team not more deserving than Yugoslavia. It's so difficult to choose between these two teams. Both have played superb tournaments. And of course, a superb final. European basketball is its grittiest best. In the end, it's just a very close one. Frustration on the Russian bench. They played their cards right. Sasha Georgievich being carried off. Such a troubled decade of life over in Yugoslavia. And these basketball championships, they've won in Europe, and now they've won the world championships here in Athens. Obracha, this is the first tournament he's come through where he's really had to show Tremendous leadership. Vitaly Nostov 
Trying. What a great game he had, though. Brave performance by Masov. Hugs all around on the Yugoslavian bench. And there's Dusan Ivkovic Duda with the, uh, the young, young man he coached at Partizan Belgrade, who later became the coach of Partizan Belgrade, took them to the European title, and is now the coach of Yugoslavia, Sasha uh, uh, Zeliko Obradovic. Well, they got, Russia got the bronze at Eurobasket. They have to settle for silver for a second consecutive time in the World Championships. Perhaps their time will come, and maybe it will be in Sydney at the next Summer Olympics in the year 2000. And that man right there, Dejan Bodoroga, had an MVP performance. We'll wait and see who gets it. In the second half, Yugoslavia just shading the rebounds. This is the full stats of the game, of course. Russia shot the ball slightly better from two-point range, but from three-point range, the Yugoslavs came through. It's a very even final. It's reflected in the stats and also in the final score. 64 to 62, this man has won an awful lot in a very short time as a coach. He only decided to, to become a coach at the start of the decade. Ironically, when the national team didn't take him to the 1991 European finals after he'd helped them qualify for it.